no with the Zeus. Zeus. <laughs> There's a couple of those purplish ones. He's trying yeah. to get away, though. Yeah. Oh, larger one there on the right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he's a surprise. He's uncooperative. Fish. Look at all the fish <laughs> here. Yeah, this is a little little reef patch here with everything. You're not supposed to use the heat. Yeah. Can we zoom in? Yes, sir. Look at that guy. Hey, fishy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Can we go down anymore on Atalanta? Yeah. I always love the look on the face. It's like I wasn't ex expecting to wake up and see you today. <laughs> Just checking you out. New to the neighborhood. So it's someone possibly saying that the bluefish could be a Rexia? Okay. So with Atalanta, when, whenever it's stable and you're happy, um, I just want to review this shot uh, with everyone. So this is going to be very similar to the other two, um, one, the one at the columnar basalt and then yesterday at the volcano where um, we're using Atalanta as the primary lighting platform for everything that we're about to do. Um, Atalanta is going to remain uh, steady in this position here. Um, the request is to back up the ROV as, as much as the tether allows. We'll go full lights off at that point. Um, and then I'll ask for the ROV to start. Um, at that point, uh, the ROV is entirely yours for positioning, Robert, in terms of uh, actually moving and safely navigating. After you start the move, uh, we'll just have the lights come on after about 10 seconds and then from my point of view, um, I think approaching at a very, very slow and steady pace as we're coming towards this and um, potentially popping up a little bit over the ridge um, and allowing these colorful corals to kind of uh, float gently by the cameras. And the orientation for everyone is going to be the um, to be looking at uh, to frame the shots between the two ROV pilots is going to be the fisheye lenses is, is the primary viewpoint. And I'm going to make those a little bit larger now for um, for operations. Does that sound like a, a, a good Yeah, plan? I don't know if I gathered all that. You want me to back off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lights out. Back off. Full lights out. I'll ask you to start forward. And we want to go right into these corals over here? Yep, right idea? into those so corals, and then like um, from this orientation, or I think just riding that ridge line that you see, and there's there's more corals that, that I can already see in the distance. I think that's going to be very key. Okay, but so you want to back off from here? Back yep. off from there as much as possible. Okay. is getting a little wobbly again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not touching any controls right now, and it's just wobbling. Uh. That'll make the lighting interesting. Um, and then, and then, Robert. I think the goal is to continue flying slowly through as long as there's still light. Um, so I'm not sure our Atlanta's capacity to do a turn to continue to follow and provide lighting for ROV uh, Hercules as it continues down this ridge, revealing whatever's down on the other side. That way. That is correct. To the right. okay. I can uh, rotate it. I just don't know how stable it'll be during that. But okay. We can, we can try it out. 
isn't the only thing for you guys to keep your eye on, I'm sure you're aware, but it looks like the tether is pretty close to the ground there. Yeah. yeah. So while we're coming around that corner. That's, uh, that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Is this far enough away? Yep. Okay. Can you do full lights off on ROV Hercules first? And well, I guess we don't need the aft off, right? Aft is okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, aft is totally fine. Okay. And um, I think that's a gorgeous image. Just going to go through, do full systems. All right, so whenever you're ready, uh, it's going to be full lights off on Atalanta. ROV Hercules will go forward um, at a slow and stately pace, and then um, let's light it up with, uh, with Atalanta and then continue to kind of fly across these colorful corals. So you want to be back here in the pitch dark and then... Yep, pitch dark first, lights up the glorious scene and continues flying across. Okay. You got all that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you want me to keep the light pool right ahead of uh, Hercules? Like yes, as right. much as you possibly can. We're getting a lot of Zeus uh, weird reflections here. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's nice. Is it? Yeah, it's <laughs> I'm not using Zeus. I'm using the fish okay. eyes. So. All right, so you want lights that's out? Called the, that's called the Michael Bay. Yeah. Lights out. Lights out. Oh, uh, that's scary. <laughs> and now, uh, lights on? <laughs> right? Lights on? Um. No, hold on, sorry. Oh. Uh, I'm having a problem. That's not what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want? Stand by. I wonder... While we're waiting, could you back off even more, or is that about it? Uh, well, we could back off some more. Thank you to all of you at home that are helping us to ID. We're using our resources to make right. sure we put names okay? with these faces. Yep. All right. Stand by. Like on satellite two, we have a nice little swarm of fish there taking advantage of the lights. Okay, I'm recording. Okay, lights out. Yep. And remember, slow and steady. Yeah. Okay. Lights on as you're starting to move forward.
Yep. Well, that's tethered. Okay, right I'll tell you what. This uh, this isn't doing it for me, and the tether is there. <laughs> so uh, let's start. Let's start. Let's stop this shot. Um, yeah. What I'd like to do is uh, let's get Atalanta um, more to the port so that its light is facing and illuminating the port side wall there, the left-hand side of the wall, instead of just being straight up and down over okay. the top of it. So, Got that? Yep. Right. Thank you. No problem. Saltfish. You can probably also do for a little bit more height on ROV Atalanta. That's too low. Going up. Too low. Wow. For now, I'll change my <laughs> mind. I'll change my mind. Don't worry. That's but pretty that, low. The little dangle is yeah, pretty low. The, the dangly is not so. <laughs> it even makes me nervous, and I'm not a pilot. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move Ada, and she's going to come we in do. front of you, just so you're aware. If that's all right. Bridge, bridge, nav, one five meters at three two zero, please. Uh, you can lights on to your heart's content. Uh, Bob. Three two zero. I was Copy getting used to driving in the dark. And it pretty. I mean, it's better than that. It is a little bit. Uh, not quite as great water qu like clarity here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it kind of looked better with the lights out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this shows you exactly how fast Atalanta moves. <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> Just watch. It's like watching the sun go across the sky here. Well, we're pretty shallow, so that's as quick as you're going to get. Uh -huh. Is this height okay, or do you want it higher, lower? Uh, I think we're all right. So we heard from the team ashore that these gold corals that we're seeing on this feature uh, and that we're filming right now are typically found on these ledges. So this is as expected yeah. uh, spot for them. The other types of corals that we hope to find are, are going to be elsewhere. And so we get a lot of opportunity to, to film these different species. Yeah. Gerardia. That's what we call these gold colored ones. Gerardia? Yeah. Gerardia. Gerardia? Yeah, lights are bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, this isn't super ideal. But let's, let, we'll keep steady on, steady the course. It's interesting, it wasn't like this when we got here. Is this us kicking debris up? Are you able to look up at It looks like a lot, of, a lot of plankton coming in, too, here. up to those lights. What do you want to do? I'm not at sure it? which yeah, view that's in. But so they're flocking to us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're generally attracted to lights, and so. Is it acting weird? It's just and swaying then with back the and forth. Accumulants of them, we have those little fish well, that we're gathering well, okay. around taking. Maybe yeah. we want to look at it. Then taking advantage of a we're little gonna, lunch break. We're going to go take a gander at Atalanta here. Okay. Gander away. That's a cool Hercules highlight there. So folks might be used to that at Atlanta view um, of the ship, the ship heaving and Atalanta moving with the ship movement, but the ship's not moving that much. So what uh, Humana has noticed is that there, there may be an anomaly in the, the camera or the vehicle. Is it? 
camera-based Humana? Do you think it's the vehicle that's... Uh, I think the the vehicle is just swaying back and yeah. forth, yeah, rotating left and right. Uh, Robert, does it help if I turn the lights off on Adelaide to, to see it? Well, or? yeah, uh, try turning something off. We need to zoom in, too, I think. Ready, Sam? Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not touching controls at all right now. Yeah. It's doing the wobble. Well, so what happens if you take the auto head off? You try turning it off. Yeah, it's off. There you go. Uh, quite a bit of flocculent in the water right now. It might might not make this the best spot for might not make this the best spot for this style of imaging because the water clarity is so bad. Yeah. You want to photogrammetry and then? Um, I think that we we've, we've invested yeah, time to, to get this shot right set up. So let's just go ahead it. and run it. Just yeah. uh, yeah, and then uh, as no as 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 Bob back here mentioned, uh, try, try we'll just try to do some here. closer up stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just see what the shot that looks like. Help. And then uh, we'll do some pretty close up work. Yeah. I don't know. It looks okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why it's woggling around. But Maybe it was just like the position of the tether or something. I don't know. Yeah. So Robert, the visual inspection was to see if there was some fishing line or something that we yeah, missed that was yeah. causing the wobble. Ooh. And we don't have an uplight on Atlanta, do we? I could zoom in a little closer on where the uh, where the tether or the six eight is connected. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything happening there. So. All right, I'm gonna yeah. turn auto head back on yeah. and point at you. There it goes again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Johan, we're, we're got a little ship move? Uh, the ship move is complete. Okay. Uh, well, it looks like we're pulling at a little bit with Herc. Um, okay, I'm yeah. going back down. Yeah, I'm not sure if you uh, are able to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris's map is very useful for setting up the shot, even. Uh, we can kind of see where Ada is positioned to the cliff face that we want it to point at. Awesome. DLM, go for now. Copy that. Um, Hey, you're hiding my nav. Uh, you're messing me up. It's starting here, and then we're going to follow the rich line up. Yeah, we're going to work this one. Bob, and then we're going to work on the other side. It's a very similar long linear feature. Can you come down some? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, again, well, we've invested in this shot, but I think that we'll just have to switch to more direct lighted sampling.
we'll do some more direct light sampling essentially and not bother with Atalanta as an off-camera off source to Kay. do some of this immersive filmmaking because it looks like the water clarity is just not there. All right, well, <coughs> I don't know where we are now. Yeah. We're about we were, in the middle, and this we is were, the face we were that there? we were looking at, oh, yeah. Okay. In, is the uh, science a short chat? Mm -hmm. okay. It is amazing how many how patient you need to be to get this yeah two minute clip yep. you know it takes a lot of work to set all this up oh yeah uh, Bob I think yeah. uh, Robert what yeah. we'll do is just uh, maybe just have the ROV pause here. Let's see if this is even going to be worth it. Swing, swing Atalanta around, turn off the uh, Hercules' lights, and let's just see if there's just so much backscatter, even with Atalanta, that this is just not a usable shot. Quite Roger. milky. Roger. And we do have an update on the name of this coral. We'll share it in a second. Well. Yeah, it looks like this fisheye view, you can see there's there's a few corals at the top too that we haven't yet even. Can you try to side light this with the starboard, starboard arm light? Ugh. Nah, nah, nah. Ix nay on the light, eh? Is what? Nah, never mind on the light. Never it's mind on the light. There's so much. Okay, well let's uh, let's just if Atalanta, if you can try to follow around ROV Hercules, let's get a little closer for these views. I'm recording right now, and uh, Are let's we, we're centering up the fisheye there. Fisheye, yep. And right. uh, let's go explore up and down and around some of these big beautiful corals. ROV is yours. Um, Robert. Kula mana mana, or the Hawaiian gold coral. I hope I got that name right. Somewhat close to it, I hope. Yeah, the Kula mana mana. Yeah. Um, it's a perfect pace, very a stately. You're imagining that low rumble of a BBC orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> the deep sea. A realm of unknown possibility. Unexplored. Yeah. Welcome. That's a big shadow. No, I don't mind the shadow. I really don't. I think it looks amazing. Huh. I mean, you, we, we have to kind of own that we're on an ROV. There's no way around it, so we might as well. Look at the size of those coral on the top right. I'm really liking that. Yeah, we haven't even gotten here yet. This is great. Yeah. You can go forward just a little bit more. All right. And get up and close, up close and personal with those uh, coral up on the top. All right. So we're not trying to circumnavigate here. Nah, not for photogrammetry. We're just, uh, okay. I like I like that counter spin that you do, but we need to be kind of up close and personal for the lighting, for the yeah. color on those. Look at the Ad Atlanta camera. See him at oh all wow! So yeah, all the way around this fringe of this yeah. top of the features. Yeah, maybe be. about a standoff of about a meter around that fringe.
And uh, I would do a hurt depth down, actually, so you're kind of looking up at the coral. Yeah. And closer. Okay. This gold one is a very rare species. There you go. Devin, you might hear from Megan Putz in the chat. Um, yes. Yeah. Megan's been texting back and forth. So yes, she's she's the one that that's gotten me onto that name. Cool. Got yeah. me up there. We're able to share that. We appreciate her. Yeah, very thankful sharing for that Megan information. Yeah, we were a little too vague with our ID there. There's similar uh, family is what we were calling, but this is a specific species only found here and genus. Um, so yeah, quite a rare one that they've only. Um, from what I found, they just ID'd it back in 2012. Right. Just as, a little bit. As a new species. A little so. bit of what? A little bit closer. Yeah, thank right. you, Megan, for that clarification. There you go. And now keep uh, keep following that beautiful ridge line. We're just going to let the the light of Atalanta just occlude. You're a little close. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are, but you're clear, but yeah. Wow. And just an incredible image right here that we're getting. I'd like everyone just to imagine this coral just wafting back and forth in the current in, in utter darkness. That's that's the emotion we want to convey. That lighting is awesome. Yeah, that's so good. Jeez, there's more coming into the view in the fisheye lower. Yeah, you lower can get right up. You can get up a little bit closer too to the mound. They come up a little bit here. Wow. How the rays of from the beams of the light come through the corals and mm -hmm. all of the That's terrain. Remarkable. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's definitely a perspective we don't normally no. attempt. That's great. This kind of really gives you a, another idea of uh, just how important terrain is to these filter feeding coral being able to kind of stick themselves out. Zach, you had mentioned a, an interesting statistic of, of how, how fast do cor these kind of corals generally grow? Yeah, it seems like they're kind of generalized as about like one millimeter a year. So all these corals are, are going to be thousands of years old that we're seeing here. Um, many things I'm sure contribute to that, such as just the temperature, the, the lack of resources. But as we saw earlier, there's a lot of uh, plankton in this area, right? And we saw quite a few fish, and so this could be an area that has, you know, there's a reason these are all here. There's there's quite a few things surrounding this area, so. Yeah. Megan Megan shares with us that what we're looking at is over a thousand years old. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Wow. I mean, these are these are not small corals, especially that that uh, first Kula Mana Mana we saw on the side of that ridge. That was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I, are we going to have an opportunity to do the photogrammetry around this same site? My my goal is yes. I think that this I mean, it's I mean, really we, just we may get more better, up. but we let's yeah. let's yeah, yeah, yeah. own this spot. Yeah, a hundred. Bob always says, uh, "Operate like you're never going to dive again." So kula meaning gold, and then the mana mana meaning branching or like a hand in Hawaiian. Merging the color and those branchings together like that. Yeah. A beautiful name. So, Bob, I think just continuing around this face, I know it, you'll introduce a big tether wrap, but I'm not sure if, if you can keep countering around this feature and then let's yeah, just. We're all right. 
actually. That was taking a wrap out. So So let's just We're keep countering and then and then keep going to the port as you and let's follow this ridge line back towards Atalanta. Okay. So you want to go back the same way we back came? Back the same way we came, but um uh looking at the face of the r on the right hand side of the and getting getting up close and personal with these I'm sorry, what was the pronunciation? Kulamanamana? Kulamanamana? Yeah, so that's the genus. Um, so yeah, this is just a, this is a monotypic species. It's the only one in its genus and species. So um, the actual species is the Hamea E. So I'm not sure if you got a translation on that, but it's pretty unique to see a scientific name derived from the Hawaiian language. And this one, it's only found here in Hawaii. So pretty awesome that that, that was the nomenclature they gave it. Very, very descriptive. You can go Hitting. closer still. And then maybe down, let's go down on Hercules by a meter or so. Let's kind of use the whole frame there for the uh, fisheye as we have this vertical structure to story tell with. Oh yeah. Yeah, this wow. is a great find. Uh, Megan uh, Potts at the University of Hawaii, um, we owe her so much for her knowledge and the combined knowledge of Hurl um, and that team about some of these sites. Um, she really put us on and, and was an incredibly valuable contributor to making this image happen right here. Yeah, K2 and the Norbit, too. Jeez. Yeah. Think about we, we did a survey, and, you know, we knew the type of structure we were hoping to find, and without that sensor, we would have been just flying around hours looking, and this Whoa. is... Uh, I th Robert, I think uh, I'll abandon it. the request to go down a little bit. Let's let's go up and kind of go even and get as close as possible to that, uh, to the rock face, because it looks like it's relatively flat, so... We're just going to do a completely lateral to the starboard, um, just flat, and just use and reveal the uh, those beautiful white fans as we go through that little ridge, or we we reveal the ridge. Right. So down down just a little bit, about right there. Yeah, let's just lateral over to the side from there. Wow. Maybe down just a little bit more as we go. Oh, beautiful. Okay, there you go. Megan shares with us that this community would have started developing 15,000 years ago. And the carbonate shelf that we're exploring right now would have sank with the big island. Okay, as this, uh, as the shadow of Hercules comes in, let's turn on the forward lights. Let's see what that does for us. Okay. As uh, that shadow is going to kill. I, I can click I'm your button if you want. Sort of busy. <laughs> is it the mid? <laughs> Robert, is it mid or? I would turn the uppers on. Uppers, I think. uppers. Yeah. uppers. Uh, eh, he says. Uh, turn it <laughs> off. <laughs> Coming off. <laughs> I'll deal with, let's deal with the shadow. There you go. Yeah, okay. There we go. Okay, so we can continue lateraling off to the, uh, to the starboard, please. What's that spiky ball to the right? Uh, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing it in the fisheye, kind of right behind the gold coral. It's on the back side of that. On the back coral, side yeah. of it? That's amazing. This is a perfect speed and a perfect view. Oh, it's going to come right in front of us now. Ooh, what is Ooh. that? It's like a giant spiky ball. Where are you looking? Uh, right behind, behind all of this doodad right no, here. The Zeus frame? Oh, there it is. Oh, the, it's an urchin. Oh, oh an it's urchin, an urchin. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a it's a complete it's a, it's all round. 
Yeah. yeah. It's very up. spiky, isn't it? Yeah. He's coming. So yeah, let's keep let's keep going wow. just like this. Is it possible to get maybe just a little more height on Atalanta to help with this shadow? Got it. And uh, let's get a, as up close and personal as is safe and counter spin around this big white gold gorgeousness that we have here. Is this as far out as the tool shed go? I'm sorry, I'm giving you too much. Is that it? Let me know what height you want me to stop at. This is good, this is good. Just trying to get that shadow as much out of it as possible, but creep it here in. we are. Yeah, it's getting worse, not better. Yeah, it's like right behind us now. Yeah. Well, let's let's keep going with this shot right now. We'll kill the shot because it's quite nice on the left-hand side, and this will look spectacular in a big dome. Yeah, absolutely. That will. ROV is right there. You can even see through the ROV right now. That's quite a cool view. The shadow, rather. Absolute. What is the name of that big white? Just oh, so. oh, there you go. Keep moving just like that. Look at the revealing out Trendling. of the shadow. That urchin is a histo. Oh, I'm going to be horrible at this. Sidarius? Sidarius? Wow. Megan yeah. is crawling out of her skin right now. She would <laughs> probably like to be in here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, let's, can we kind of back off from the wall a second? Um, I'm going to stop recording and reorient for another shot. I think that we got that style of, of, of beautiful fly through. Uh, I keep pushing, you got watch changes here. It's gonna be another 10, 12 minutes, so. Oh, okay. Um, Robert, can you can you extend the um, our crab arm out <coughs> with the light? And uh, oh, uh, let, the, let's try to- Manipulator doing, light. Yeah, manip light and get it as far away from the light and let's see if yeah. we can, let's see if we can uh, deal with that for a shot. Right. I <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that was some pretty amazing flying, Robert. Yeah, yeah. well done. Wow. Robert's like, I, I can't click the button. <laughs> Yo, honey, you need to do it. I'm doing something here. <laughs> okay, so we want to turn this light on, though, right? Turn the light on and then and then wang the our, um, our arm out. Oh, I can't what? see it there. This side. That's a bummer. You can see as, as Robert moves that light away from our lenses, the image just looks better and better. There's a, oh wow, all right. Okay, so with this lighting set up, I'd like to do the opposite spin around this same structure, same way that we did it, um, using this light in Atalanta. All right. I'm um, just going counterclockwise now. And uh, the, R the ROV is yours for when you'd like to start. Yeah. I should stop the recording. That's what I should do. Do you think that we'll be able to get a count of these corals using the photogrammetry? 
account size? Uh, we will, yes, we'll, we are definitely going to do a dedicated photogrammetry survey of this entire rock after we're done um, with this uh, initial beauty shots. I don't want to, we, we probably can pull, we could with a lot of effort pull photogrammetry out of these fisheye views, this 180, but it's uh, not, this is such a significant nice site that I want to make sure that we, we do it right. And then yes, count, um, density of them, and um, our... Uh, is that looking how you want it? Yeah, it is. It'll, it'll look better as we get through. We just need to be careful because we're like, you know, we have this big old arm. Big old lenses, big old everything. Yeah. Can you counter around that, that white? You mean up high? Uh, no, just like, just like you were doing. Just gently. Sorry. It's okay. Just, uh, just lateral along the wall. Okay. How will you deal with the shadow? Oh, it'll, it'll just, it'll just be a feature. It'll just it's be a feature, feature not a bug. Okay. You know, at the end of the day, we're we're telling the story that we're um, we're guests in this landscape. Absolutely. That we're we're looking at something that is normally shrouded by darkness. Um, this is how this is how I would write and describe the emotion of of this style of view. Um, and so, having the shadow of the ROV. Um, is is actually quite a, a powerful storytelling element for um, the fact that we are here, that we're we're guests um, in, in in this landscape. That was probably too fast. Right? No, this is absolutely perfect, uh, Robert. Very easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like it. So Megan's letting us know she definitely wishes she was here. I'm so She'd sorry. She'd be giving Megan. all kinds of IDs and factoids to share with us in regards to this Truly amazing remarkable. event. Megan, I, I really look forward to working with you on this, on whatever this film turns out to be as well. And yeah, actually, let's just pop up over this landscape right now before the ROV okay. hits. Yeah, there you go. This is this is really working out. Let's let's pop up over this landscape and okay. and fly over. But not into. Not into, no, into bad. There you go, little more height, little more height. I think that's perfect. Uh, so whatever is safe so we don't whack that coral yeah. on the left. And then just fly straight forward. Let's let's do a nice. Wow. That is cool. It gives off like moonscape vibes. Yeah. Absolutely want to play a beautiful lo-fi beat. There's another one Got of those. Got an urchin in your coral? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, so no. spiky. Yeah, I was just chatting quick with um, the data manager, Taylor Ann, as well. And we think the, the white ones are part of the primnoid family. Right. Um, not sure of the species, but this is beautiful. what they're looking like. Robert. This, yeah. I'm liking that slight off-center on the lighting. Maybe we can start sinking down, Robert. Yeah, I got 
corals right there. So right. I, I can come back a little bit. And if we can, we can sink down until the light is occluding, you know, kind of peeking through, the light of Atalanta is peeking through those corals yeah. again, and then continue off to the port okay. to the left-hand side. Wow. There you go. And let's keep backing away from this uh, as much as the tether allows. Maintain the same height? Yeah. Kind of lateral a little bit to the left-hand side as you're doing this, just backing away, backing away, and revealing that clip wall to the left. Yeah, the shot's dead. Okay, cool. Good. Yep. Said someone suggesting that we did a 3D print of some of those corals. Yeah. That would be really awesome for. We'll spend the time to make the mo to collect the images that'll make the model. It's oh, Quinn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you need a resin printer, really, to do the corals right. I don't think that the FDM is not really the right tool. Yeah. Um, so I am inclined to do good photogrammetry on this one section, and then let's move on uh, and explore a bit more. What do you think, Jason? Uh, I think we're, yes. We're gonna maybe we get set up. You get the camera settings all, however you want them, and then we like turn it over to, to the next group wraps? to start that. How does that work? Okay. Rather than get going and get interrupted. Wait, you went wait, one wait. way and then you went back. Yeah, that seems too, too coincidental <laughs> there. <laughs> Lucky. Has uh, they, have they been working? See, we had something funny yesterday because we had two wraps. Is the ground fault okay, or is that the arm? That's the arm. Okay. <laughs> That's the arm. Yeah. It's just a feature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a good learning tool for new ROV pilots. Well, uh, yeah, the, the new electronics is going to have independent ground checks on everything. So we can know what the ground fault is, like, exactly. That sounds useful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what are we doing? Sorry. Um, okay, so we are moving at uh, moving repositioning the ROVs in Atalanta such that I'm going to set up for photogrammetry. So we'll do essentially the same move that you did. Um, we're going to sweep along one side of the wall with the cameras clicking, and then we will set up and start doing slow and stately runs across the top of this to build up the um, structure of this entire mound. Yeah, and really from bottom. To yep. top. It's, it's bottom to top. Yeah, we gotta. Okay. Sure we uh, interesting. Uh, see the shadow of the coral there. That the, the way that it reflects actually. through. Oh yeah, yeah, Right yeah. there, it's beautiful. Oh, to yeah. check the the tethers. Well, Tell you just the to check to see that the heading reading's right. Okay, I'm gonna. I just uh, there's too many zeros involved here. I don't. I don't like it. I'm gonna go 45 degrees to the right. Yeah, just even 10. Just something. To, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I like that. Everyone, if you're watching, um, you can really see by this style of work just how s a subtle change in the lighting can completely change the dynamic of of, uh, of the impact of the scene. And uh, something really unique to doing underwater um, cinematography like this is is that you are bringing all of our lights with us, and we're constrained by the. Um, uh, operational reality of how we can work in this style of environment. Um, tether wraps and uh, Atalanta's uh, ability to go up and down, it, it all comes together and you get the shot that you can. So, Robert. Yeah, we're kind of getting far away from, yeah. Yeah, if we're done here, yeah. the plan is to go along and then over. 
where would be the ideal position for Adam? Yeah, we're kind of at the end of the tether there. So right. We have to get so a bit closer. Yeah. Kind of in yeah. front of you. Okay, I'm going to get the camera set up for photogrammetry mode. Okay. Yeah, it's moving a little bit towards me anyway. Sure thing. We don't want to no tether jerking. I'll bring it just 10 meters at yeah. 100. Zero zero. Bridge, bridge, nav, one zero at one zero zero. <laughs> yeah, right now you have one meter. I need one zero meters. Well, we've got a shift change taking Copy. place. So LA much. is on her way to Sid is your new science communication fellow. Thank you for following along with us today. We'll see you next time. No Python dot pi. Oops. Nano timer dot pi. And I'm going down here. And uh, we are going to do the port side. Port, port, port. Okay, so Dan, we're bringing, uh, Robert had me move at a, about 10 meters a little bit in front of you, uh, and pretty much we're just going to be doing a photogrammetry, so zooming all around, looking at all this kind of stuff. Um, and Port, port, port. Two, yeah, you one, can kind of see where we've been, and port. we're just going to cover that whole area. Port, port, port. 213 is port. I want to do port and the same um, So timer.py is now running. Let's do python3 timer.py. Are you uh, recording, Jonathan? Or? Negative, uh, negative Ghost Rider. One hot second, please. <coughs> you got are, the debrief there. Are uh, we doing all this with Atlanta shining in her? Um, good. Huh? Good point, actually. Um, let's. Can you? We just have really wicked bad backscatter right now. Can you put the Fords and the mids on? Let's see. Let's see how compromised we are. <laughs> Woo! Ugh. Let's try to and just the Fords maybe. All right, let's let's roll with just the Fords. All right. And um, so just before we go, do you want what viewpoint would you like for uh, the fish eyes and the top? Right now, this is just the port side lens, which is zoomed in. 
Do you want the uh, three camera set up uh, on OBS up top? Yeah, that would be helpful. Okay, stand by. Are you using the, what cameras are you using? Are you using the cinema cam as well? I'm using all three, yeah. Yeah, well, it would be helpful to see all three. All right. That manipulator light is... Uh, and the manip is way out, so... Is that helpful, or...? It is very helpful, but if you think it'll, uh... It'll be a danger, don't, don't hesitate to... No, I'm fine with it out there, just bopping around the rock here. Order, move to... Yeah, uh, but you know Atalanta light is kind of in the shot there. Oh so, yeah, so, so we so we should we should move we should move Atalanta to be a safe uh, distance that we can, uh, well, we, we can do photogrammetry of this entire uh, surface. Roger. So should whatever try, whatever's try this coming up just a little bit, just to get so I don't. Uh, clip the tether on the way around there. <coughs> yeah, let me just see if it's still, it was kind of shining in our eye here when we were. Yeah, you can see it's Atlanta light in the stereo camera there. And the starboard camera? I don't mind the starboard, just the port. The port's not the only thing I'm taking photos with. Roger. You want me to scare that fish out of there? Or is <laughs> no. Him? No, um, but if you're happy with that, let me just go full screen preview. And I need to pop up my other computer. Ch -ch -ch. What am I doing a little computer dance through this whole thing? Over here. And that looks good. 60 uh, This is, uh, sorry, photogrammetry or immersive? This is photogrammetry, that's right. correct. So I can um, single, and i got to do a couple more little changes here before I feel super secure. Just do it quick, timer.py, how are we looking? Oh, you know what? I did this. I'm just going to come up for a minute and get an overview here, so see where I can come around and make sure there's nothing I can get myself in trouble with. Yeah. There we go. All right, so let me just go through. Are you also using uh, Zeus? Um, they, actually, that's another good point. Since we're in photogrammetry mode, we can rack back the camera and the porch to be our safe configuration as well. Roger. Because uh, I, I do want to keep that Zeus as a backup option. There you go. Thank you. Okay, so we're tight. We have one. We have the right-hand arm craft sticking way out. The purpose of this is to have full coverage um, from the base to the top, and then all of the coral species that are on the top. Um, I'll leave it up to Nav and your team to kind of lay out what's the best course of action to accomplish those goals. And then Chris, since this is such a key feature and we've spent so much time, I'd also like if you could think about the uh, Norbit coverage and just to make sure that you're fully happy with the coverage of this one element. Yeah, I think we got actually a really good pass on it. It's a relatively high altitude pass, so it's not going to be the highest resolution possible, but we, got, we have good coverage on it. Okay. Um, yeah. And we were actually, yeah, we should even have good views of the face because we were off to the side. 
Okay. And, and, you're, and you're, collect, you're continuing to collect data now. As yeah, well. oh yeah, so, always. So you'll get that even uh, closer in look. Okay. Okay, looks like we're uh, settled in. So welcome to the 12 to four watch. Absolutely awesome, thank you. Okay, um, yeah, ROV is yours. Um, here to start whenever you think you're uh, you're set up with uh, Atalanta at all. Yeah, <coughs> I think uh, Atalanta's in a good spot there. Okay, I'm um, ready to ready to go. If everyone else is happy. Yep. Can we start with? Would you like to start with the top or the base? Uh, probably up top, so I don't stir anything up when I'm down low. Okay. Tell me when. And then, of course, we, we want to be as close as is responsible for the corals, just to get good light. Yeah, absolutely. Let me come back down here a mile hey, away. You're using what to light it up, though? Right now, we have the little starboard, like, angled so light the, out because the back scatters. Held, held, held by the, yeah. the arm. Okay, and that's, yeah. the, that's the only source of light. Um, and we have forwards on right now okay. because the, uh, the, the back scatter is quite quite brutal here. Yeah, when it's shallow water, it's going to be more. Yeah. All right, if we just uh, let folks know where we are, we're, we're sitting uh, right off the coast of Kona, um, just northwest of it, an area that we've been to earlier this uh, leg, uh, but we actually ran out of time before we got to the uh, most shallow area and that's the area that probably has the highest concentrations of uh, precious corals and other corals and, and indeed that's uh, what we found we dropped down uh, right to the top of the feature of 400 meters or so where we left off last time and i found this uh this beautiful uh, area with there we go jonathan bunch of corals on top um and we're going through several different uh imagery modes. Uh, Jonathan has completed a uh, immersion survey that would be uh, ideal for things like IMAX theaters and, and fully immersed viewing of the scene and now we're doing what's called a photogrammetry mode. And that means we're gonna kind of spiral around it getting continuous overlapping coverage uh, so that Jonathan can build a complete 3D model of the feature. Can we take a pause right here? Uh, let me increase the photo speed that I'm taking. Sure. Am I going too fast there for you? Uh, no, you're going at a great speed, but let me just actually m modify the script real quick to take more photos. All right. For our viewers, this is controlled through a little Python script that is executing the actual commands to take the photos. and I'm modifying it. So it takes a photograph every three seconds and I've executed that now, so you're good to go. So I turn the downs on there while I'm closer, or is that? I like that, yeah. Right. Let's keep the downs on, That that's that's a nice image. Right. We get less uh, flock if we're closer. Yeah. Not too bright in the upper, is it? Nope, I don't, I'm not, yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. 
A key challenge of doing photogrammetry like this is to make sure that you cover every angle of these very finely detailed uh, formations so it fills in the kind of the totality of its structure from both the front and the back. Otherwise what you'll get is a uh, kind of the one-sided view of what that object looked like, which isn't the end of the world. Um, but you'll essentially have a great model in the front and just uh, a gray model on the back. But again, the, the purpose of this expedition um, isn't necessarily to you know, collect this super complete model on every single one of the objects that we see, but rather just to choose one or two spots where we can kind of do this level of detail. Um, the rest and the real objective of the expedition for, for exploration through advanced imaging is really talking about process and how do we integrate a new technology like this with an ROV like Hercules, what um, procedures kind of happen in the back uh, to make that happen, um, how much extra person power does it require to um, process images like this on the fly and, and uh, the big work, the big thrust of the work that uh, Rachel and I have been uh, really working on. Rachel is our partner in this uh, data engineer uh, behind the scenes, making all the, the programming really happen. Um, our focus has really been on um, uh, taking each one of the elements, each one of the challenges. Um, we look at it from the perspective of how can we manually do it with the rest of the teams here, and then we're, we're automating those processes. Everything from taking the photos to uh, getting the photos from the cameras to the server and the server to the processing stations and eventually the, the processing itself to be a fully automated uh, affair. So, so Jonathan, we had, a, we had a question about the size of the corals and I'm wondering whether it would interrupt what you're doing if we put the lasers on for a, a few minutes. I think that that's a fantastic option that I didn't uh, I forgot to do, and thank you. And um, on the same light, um, I'm sorry to ask this because I forgot, but could we put the fiducial out on one of these little somewhere? Okay, so that's a that's sure. a major ask. To that's a big ask. Uh, we I can think, let's let's you, just let's do, do that at the next side. Right. Well, or or I was saying instead of interrupting the. The process, maybe at the yeah. end of the process, we can get the yeah. We could do off. that. Yeah, we could do that. And and just la but lasers are a fantastic idea. Yeah. So Dan, if you put the lasers on for a few minutes, please. Yeah, you can turn them on. And there you go. Um, so when we see the two the two green laser spots, we know that that's. Did you uh, mark lasers on? Ten centimeters or or about four inches apart when they intersect the rock or or the coral, and so you can you get a you can judge the size of the corals from that. And so you see the corals are quite quite substantial and that's probably 50, 50 centimeters at least uh, in width, the, the, the pink one. Maybe we can ask Taylor Ann to describe some can of the... Can you hit uh, porch on the... Uh, yeah, so these large fans that we're seeing, the big pink ones, are Paracolyptrophora, um, also known as primnoids. Um, and then the yellow ones, uh, I got told that they were, uh, what is the name here? They were a zoantherium, but I think that they might actually be something else. They don't quite look like zoanthids, but I could be wrong. So our ID for the yellow ones could be Kulamanamana Huamane. I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but um, it's a pair of zoanthid that actually overgrows the, the skeleton of, a, of a, another coral. Um, I previously was IDing these as a Canthagorgia, but um, so I will keep hunting that down and make sure our ID is correct. And I think we're, we're fortunate. We I think uh, on the chat or has been on the chat is uh, Megan Putz from the University of Hawaii, uh, who's uh, quite the expert in these corals, and I'm Hi, sure Megan. she'll 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 keep, she'll she'll keep us uh, on track. Yeah, thank you, um, Megan. In, in That'd terms be of the identification, she's also the one who led us to this place. So, so we're we're very grateful. Thank you. To yes. Her for that. Lasers off. Too. This is spectacular. All these large fans. Copy that, right? Lasers off, please. 
We've got a comment coming in about the beautiful corals and shout out to Dan, the cameraman. Jonathan's cameraman, I'm just the bus driver. <laughs> we all know who's in control, Dan. Jonathan's the, the music. And so on the seafloor there, is that dead coral stalks that we're seeing? It looks like it. Yeah, some dead coral hash material. And I guess that makes perfect sense as they go through their life cycle, although I guess they can live hundreds of years, and some of these must be relatively old given their size. Fishy. Oh, yeah, there's a fish. Oh, he'll be a fun to 3D model if he doesn't move. Don't move, yeah, fish. Don't, yeah, we're oh, I hold, think still, hold still for a second. Well, he's mm -hmm. doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah, he's just moving that one little thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's turning. He's asking, he's asking, what are you doing, guys? Why? Do we know what kind of fish that was? Uh, let me check. It's I've seen it in the guide. I just can't remember its name. viewers saying don't forget to thank nature too geez this is so beautiful <laughs> a good a good point there uh, megan's writing in that there was a good example of a midas colony a midas colony is when the golf coral is in the process of overgrowing the bamboo coral coral I a canella colony. These corals are over a thousand years old. Wow. Oh, that is that is remarkable. Gosh. Over a thousand years. Wow. Ah, oh, the the fish was an orange ruffy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Megan. That's so helpful. Let me find a scientific yeah, name. Yeah, you can keep me in view. So uh, what we're witnessing with Megan chiming in like this is really the power of telepresence, that, that we can never have all the expertise we need on board, and yet we can bring in scientists ashore who could really take part in the mission uh, from their office, from their home, uh, and, and really help us and help the community in terms of uh, guiding us to exactly what we're seeing. Uh, somebody's writing it. Yes, Mahalo Kanaloa. Mahalo yeah, Kanaloa. Mahalo, yeah. And Megan is saying Hoplos Deathus for the scientific name of the orange ruffy. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan, we have a question about the models being available to the public. Absolutely. These models uh, will be made sure available to the public. We have a public repository right now on Sketchfab where you can download some of our more notable uh, finds um, and 3D print them at home. If you're curious about what one of these uh, columnar basalt foundations look like or the talus slopes of a, a dormant underwater volcano, um, we're starting to process those models and we make them all available. Um, this particular site um, is likely going to be, the data will likely go to um, a close collaborator earlier on in this project with uh, Dr. Travis Courtney and his uh, undergrad, or I'm sorry, master's student Ignacio. Um, who are interested in using photogrammetry to... Yeah, um, I don't think we're photogrammetry in this. I just wanted to get an idea of what was behind me there, so don't wipe no anything Roger. out. No worries. Um, 
to investigate the relative density of coral communities and uh, the total biomass that they might represent on a site like this. So super interesting scientific and um, communications and education um, outlets for, for material like this. Um, um, somebody and, spotted and it's a sketch, oh. it's sketch oh. fab um, it's and if you go to sketchfab.com slash EV Nautilus you can see some of these models uh, somebody spotted an urchin uh, yeah a histosideris uh, urchin histosideris carinata Thank you. Someone uh, watching thinks that it has to be a bit of a drag to live hundreds or thousands of years and have to sit in exactly the same spot. <laughs> 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 Must be a good spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? The, so it's living a pretty good life there if it lasted that long. Yeah. Oh, there's little fishies uh, swimming in and out of the holes there. Absolutely gorgeous view on the uh, on the, on the, the wide angle. Uh, yeah. yeah. You can see just the rich richness of colors that you get uh, once you get closer to these features, because uh, light attenuates the blue channel so quickly, in uh, in the through the water. So the further you get, you can actually see a little bit uh, in the distance, the more blue and blue and blue things look because it's absorbing the red channel. Yeah, there's a kind of a magical distance there where the colors just pop. Yeah. It's usually dangerously close to 1,000-year-old coral <laughs> or 5,000 pounds already. <laughs> Thank you. And joining you guys will be Rachel Simon, our close partner on this project, data engineer who's really been behind the scenes for developing all of these uh, automated scripts on the back end. That is really cool. Uh, someone's asking what causes all the holes in the rocks? It's, a, it's always a good question. Some of them actually come from, uh, I assume, uh, fish that are burrowers um, and other organisms that burrow, and some may be just natural erosion of, I assume this is a carbonate material. So it may have been previously eroded. Um, but I think there is, uh, I don't know, Taylor Ann, do you, do you know about burrowing, uh, with the fish burrow and, and organisms burrow? And yeah, I'm not too sure what can make these large holes. And uh, I do know that there are some um, mollusks and things that can um, create boring holes in other, in rocks and other uh, shells of other organisms. But I'm not too sure about, about what we're seeing here. Yeah, and some of this can be uh, chemical erosion too, mechanical uh. and chemical. Oh, oh, here we go. Yeah. yeah, again, it's just fantastic having Megan, who's such an expert on there, uh, joining in with us because uh, she has the expertise. And she says the carbonate shelf we're exploring used to be a shallow water coral reef, but sea level uh, uh, rose and eventually drowned the reef. And the big island sinks due to its immense weight um, on the lithosphere. And the holes are erosion, yeah. So the erosion that, that took place uh, when it was uh, in shallower water. And I, I assume their organisms take advantage of the of the holes then, as opposed to creating most of them. 
And I believe we just saw an orange plexorid fan, but kind of passed over that quickly. And uh, Larry, how, how deep is this? And, and uh, how, over what period of time has this sunk? Yeah, so uh, we're sitting off the, uh, the, the big island, which is uh, fairly new, as you know. And, and so it, uh, I don't know what the subsidence rate Will be. We're sitting at about 400 meters, uh, but we have a combination of both, uh, as Megan says, the weight of the building of the island that has subsidence, and we also have a general sea level rise going on. And so it's that combination of features that can um, create or sh create shallow water outcrops, what were originally shallow water outcrops now at depths of 400, 500 Come meters. Down five uh, so uh, Megan says the coral community started developing about 15,000 years ago when the shelf reached the depth optimal for these animals. And I guess from what we've been seeing, the optimal depth for these guys is on the order of 400, 500 meters. This is certainly 300 maybe to 500 meters where we've been seeing them. So 15,000 uh, years ago would cor correspond roughly to the end of the ice age and the melting of the uh, great I ice did, sheets and yeah, a general come back raising up here. of ocean sure levels all over the Donald world. Wants to go down the cliff face here. That, yeah, oh, yeah. No, we no. had the the last ice age uh, peaked oh, about 18,000 years ago, here. and right after that we had a, a relatively there. rapid global rise in sea level of, uh, on average, uh, oh, well, the, the, lo the last la low stand of sea level was about a, on average about 120 meters, and so it's risen that much uh, in the last 18,000 years. Uh, Megan says that the orange coral was a canella and the subsidence rate is about three to four millimeters a year. Wow. Genius of deep sea bamboo. I did not, I have not seen that before. It's really beautiful. Um, somebody thinks that they saw a siphonophore in the Atalanta cam. I don't know. All right, if we see a siphonophore, then we know that Dan is going to get nervous. Already nervous. We see that as we are moving deeper, the abundance of coral is getting a little less. Uh, the, the greatest abundance was was at the top of the feature, and I guess that makes sense in terms of um, being able to intercept the currents and, and have better success at feeding. In the greater abundance of coral, Larry, does that also indicate a greater abundance of uh, food and nutrients in the water? at uh, shallower depth? Well, I think when the, uh, it's where they're most opportune to intercept the currents that carry the nutrients. Uh, viewers asking why do siphonophores make Dan nervous? I, uh, at first glance, they appear to be a line in the water. And sometimes at second and third glance, they <laughs> still appear to be a line in the water. And, and as we've learned, lines are, are bad. Yeah. Just kind of doing an up and down here on this base. So. Uh, it's a bit less nerve-wracking to uh, thrust down and float up because I can going sideways with a. I'm afraid I'm going to run into something. 
So I have a question for Megan. Um, these yellow coral fans, are these zoanthids Hot. overgrowing precious corals? Because they really have the um, the thick base that um, is typical of, of those corals, but I'm just not sure here. Uh, no, you're good. Uh, just I'm going to move over a little and then come back down. So now, now we're at the top of the feature. You see, hanging around the edges, we see the, the corals, which is something we've seen very consistently wherever we've seen a, a feature with positive relief. Remember in the uh, area, even with the columnar corals, when we had a feature standing up proud, the, the, in that case, the crinoids, uh, be sitting on the edge, always on the edge. And I suspect that has to has to do a little uh, extra turbulence there, and again to bring to bring them nutrients. Oh, we've got little purple fish. Dan now working his way back down the feature. Again, this is uh, all in support of Jonathan's uh, photogrammetry imagery. The idea of creating a, a full 3D model of this feature and the resolution of which uh, his model will come out will certainly include not just the geologic structure but it should have all the corals well defined my challenge to chris and his sonar is to whether the sonar will be able to see the corals yeah i think the sonar generally sees through them if they're the wispy ones up in the water column. Mm -hmm. uh, the sonar is tuned to look for hard bottom. Uh, we might catch it if we put multi-detect on. Yeah. But at this point, multi-detect is off. Yeah, no, and I would suggest leaving it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it'll, uh, uh, well, we can talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have an answer for you, Taylor Ann. Uh, Megan says that, yes, the gold coral, Kula mana mana, is a zoanthid. They typically overgo the Akanella bamboo. Okay. Thank you, Megan. You can really see the evidence of the erosion as this, uh, as we move along uh, in this area where you can clearly see this was not only much shallower, but you can almost see the wave action and the currents uh, eroding these holes. Uh, it, Me uh, Megan says that the little blue purple fish with the double dorsal fin was Epigonus, the deep sea cardinal fish. Thank you, Megan. It was a really cool looking fish. Uh, we have somebody asking if these are, are protected waters in terms of fishing or anything. Uh, I... I don't think they are.
Um, Megan says, no, this area is not protected. Um, somebody's asking, what is the brownish gray coral on the side of the hill that was half covered with the yellow coral? That was a, a coral that was probably originally a uh, primnoid or a paracalyptophora. I'm not sure which specific one they were talking about, but those are the species that we're seeing being overgrown with these yellow zoanthids, um, as Megan pointed out earlier. Oh, there's the the cardinal fish again. Seeing this this very clear evidence of rapid sea level rise um, in this in this formation we're we're, we're sailing past uh, reminds me of a, of a terrific uh, bit of research that uh, Dr. Ballard did in uh, showing that the the great flood uh, occurred in the Black Sea area as the sea levels rose in the Mediterranean following the end of the Ice Age as the sea level rose in the Mediterranean. The, uh, the Bosphorus, which passes right next to uh, what was Constantinople, what is now Istanbul, uh, was essentially a, a giant dam. It was preventing water from the Mediterranean from flowing into the Black Sea until the glaciers melted and the water levels rose so rapidly in the Mediterranean that it eventually it punched through the Bosphorus. And as uh, Bob explains it, the water shot out for some, you know, considerable distance into the Black Sea and caused a very rapid rise in the sea levels of the Black Sea and communities that lived along the seashore in the Black Sea had to basically escape the rapidly rising Can you move uh, 10 meters towards me? So it was a worldwide uh. phenomenon to have the water levels rise very rapidly. Uh, Megan says that the gray was a different species of zoanthid overgrowing the gold uh, coral skeleton. Uh, and we have a fan of Taylor Ann. Uh, they say, as always, you are amazing in your knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is a lot more shallow than I'm used to for dives. These are, yeah, um, so this is a little bit new for me. Uh, but yeah, I can recognize those primnoids anywhere. It's these yellow coral fans that I'm like, oh, I can't tell if they're zoanthids or not. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's what we're seeing, as Megan pointed out. So I will trust her on that. Yeah, we are a lot uh, shallower than usual. We're at 387 meters depth right now. And Dan, you're at, you're at the top now again, yes. Yeah, I'm just kind of coming up and down and then moving yep. left, coming up and down, moving left. Yeah, and so all this is uh, to get this continuous overlapping high resolution imagery that Jonathan will then use to put together a, a detailed 3D model. So the question was, whose voice was that um, telling the incredible history of the Black Sea Dam? Damn, that's uh, John Culberson, who's a, a great friend of this program. Uh, John was a congressman from Houston for a very long time, uh, and uh, he was a tremendous supporter of NASA, as he still is, and of the Ocean Exploration Program. And so he's been a, a partner and friend for many, many years, and has had, uh, is this your second time on the ship, John, or third? Uh, Larry, this is actually, I think, my eighth or ninth eighth? Eighth? Oh, expedition I had no idea. Uh, over these many years at uh, uh, Dr. Ballard and I have been, been good friends, and, and, and with you, my friend, I'm now, uh, now that I'm out of uh, Congress, uh, serving on the board of the Ocean Exploration Trust, and um, it, a constant source of, of uh, inspiration to work with you and all these great scientists and engineers on the Nautilus doing this cutting, cutting edge oceanographic research and making these great discoveries, and, and learning about such things is the uh, you know, Bob's a discovery that the flood actually did occur in the Black Sea when the glaciers melted and the sea levels rose rapidly uh, and flooded the Black Sea. And as we see here, flooded these these uh, these old coral beds. So yes, I've been out many 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 times working with y'all and uh, enjoyed every bit of it. It's a great uh, source of inspiration. 
Well, I apologize. I hadn't realized you'd been out on that many cruises. That's great. And I think as you can tell, not only was John a, a wonderful congressman, but he's also a great student of science and history, particularly astronomy. A tremendous... Uh... Thank you. Thank you, Larry. It's a source of great uh, joy for me to be able to help the science community and the, and the exploration of the oceans, the, uh, the solar system, uh, to support NASA and uh, work you're doing here on the Nautilus, and to explore the ocean worlds of the outer solar system is another passion of mine, Europa in particular. No, oh, there's a tether in the background, sorry. <laughs> I know Megan's on with us, and I uh, wonder if, Ma Megan, I wanted to ask you about the, what does it uh, tell us about the environment here in terms of the yeah, nutrient level and the types of the these one. different species of now. coral? Does it tell you anything in particular about the in, the, the environment uh, Actually, when I've you see these different the wrong species? Side of this, no, that's a good view there, I can. If she's still in line. I'll just have to pick it up a little on the next one up. Just, uh, see them coming up and down. Uh, uh, I don't know. We have a viewer pointing out a, the dark colored coral down there was a black coral. It indeed was. And okay. then uh, somebody asking, what are the cute little black fish with the big eyes? <laughs> I believe those are the epigonus uh, teles telescopus. Um. Yeah, it's really exciting to see this beautiful diversity of life of corals and fish. We haven't been seeing many of uh, these these species, so this is really exciting. Yeah. Oh, there's a big fish right there. Well, it's, it's also encouraging to see the little bitty fish because you've got obviously places for them to hide. If you've got places to hide and nutrient for the for the little fish, for the smaller animals, there's clearly going to be larger ones that uh, in the area that can eat them. It's, it's supporting a, a diverse and flourishing uh, food chain. Uh, somebody's commenting also a very large number of stolon stoloniferans on the wall. And that they think that was a lantern fish. So as a uninformed geophysicist, what is a stol stoloniferan? This looks like it's a, a type. Giant. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rachel. Oh no, I was just gonna comment that this looks like a giant brain. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. <laughs> Especially uh, with that split in the middle, right? Yeah. Sorry, Taylor Ann. Uh, <laughs> an important contribution. No, it's okay. So stolen inferens, I always think that they're sponges sometimes because they're soft corals that form on the the rock. Um, but it's a suborder of soft coral. So oh. if somebody sees one, if you could point it out to me, I'd appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't quite see it, but yeah. I'm well, sure if we got a closer look at the rocks, we would see more as well. And again, that's the power of how of having hundreds of eyes on something as yeah. opposed to just when each of our viewers can, can look and identify stuff, it, it adds to the much bigger picture. And again, that's what the, this idea of distributed science and, and telepresence is all about. It's amazing. I really appreciate all of our scientists ashore that chime in and help us out because yeah like you said we can't always have every expert aboard as much as we would like to Roger. yeah just let me know it pull, pulls me a little bit when i'm right close to the cliff there and pull me actually pull me into the cliff well i'll thrust back before that happens but then the visibility will be gone so we're going to come back down the crack. Just I'm not sure I got that. Larry, if I could uh, ask and confirm the type of rock that we're looking at here. This is 
Is this an old? This is an old coral reef. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know if it's a reef or, but it's certainly carbonate. Um, so it's for, again formed in shallow water carbonate, um, and that has now uh, again both subsided and been inundated by the rise of sea level. And so somebody asks about the. The, the tunnels in the rock, the, it's really just uh, erosion, erosional features um, as uh, the material went through dissolution and, and mechanical erosion um, in the shallow water. And I think this will be very characteristic of many shallow water carbonates. But now we're finally at 400 meters and, and we saw examples at other parts of the cruise where there was this kind of stuff even much deeper. So this is not necessarily old coral reef, but it brought the type of rock laid down by coral reefs. Yeah, and again, I you know I I I, I defer to people who know more about it that, than I do. Um, I don't know if we consider well. I, I think it's a question of what you you consider reef building, I, and and maybe indeed this would indeed be the way what we would consider reef building in terms of the shallow water carbonate accumulating, keeping up with the rise of sea level uh, from the productivity of material. I know the Guadalupe Mountains in far west Texas that extend into New Mexico are an ancient coral reef. Similar rocks, similar material laid down many millions of years ago in a shallow inland sea that stretched from the Gulf of Mexico up through the Great Plains into Canada. That's why they're, they're the Great Plains. It's an old, it's an ancient silted over inland sea. And the Guadalupe Mountains, when you see Guadalupe Peak and all those mountains in West Texas, just imagine a giant flourishing coral reef in a uh, in an ocean in the time of the Cretaceous, the dinosaurs. And, and John Megan has uh, provided an answer to your question that this is a very mature and diverse community on a stable substrate with strong current and nutrient flux from the surface. And that other yeah, look- Yeah, I'm gonna come up and fly along the ridge this time. I think we've done up and down for, I don't know, meters and meters here. Other locations don't host this kind of community because they're too young and not stable enough. Uh, so this is really a result of the fact that it, it has been stable for so long and What's the community has been allowed to develop. Megan, uh, to, uh, Megan, thank you for that because I knew that the, you know we, we see visually see. these different species Some other that it's color. telling us a lot about the uh, food chain, the nutrients, and the environment awesome. in which it's growing. And, and Megan, this confirmed that this is indeed an old coral reef. So this is what what the cross section of an old reef would look like. So if you if you take a look. Uh, Larry or anyone that's listening to the geology, look at the geology of the Guadalupe Mountains in West Texas, you'll see the same thing. It's a, it's a giant ancient coral reef. And the other reason I've always found that to be fascinating is that the Permian Basin is right there at the foot of those mountains. And that's the last part of the inland sea that dried up. So that all that ancient uh, yeah, sea life that accumulated there right in that shallow here. sea created those nearly bottomless reserves, uh, reservoirs of uh, oil and gas in the Permian Basin in West Texas and New Mexico. We have a question. Are there any invasive kinds of corals in this area and how do coral multiply? So um, apparently from the Bishop Museum in Hawaii, some of the precious coral reefs are under threat from invasive species yeah, um, by I some octocorals uh, um, and stolonifera. Right um, and what was the other question? How do coral uh, multiply? No, so you can actually um, turn the fans down because uh, you're now blowing more air across the hotter water. So. You're heating the van up, I think. 
Yeah, so coral um, are broadcast spawners. Um, so they will release larvae to um, reproduce. Taylor in, they released the larvae in great clouds. I've seen, I think. Yeah, I've never actually seen a, s a coral spawning, but yeah, they, they will. Um, and they, they rely on the current to carry them. Um, and that's how they, they find good habitat potentially to, to settle on. Um, so these higher areas in the water column would be way better um, for a coral to settle than at the bottom. So they are higher up in the water column. They have more availability to use their polyps to feed to grab onto these food particles, such as like marine snow that you, s you can see kind of in the water columns, so specifically on the Atalanta camera. Um, so that's why when we went to the bottom parts of these uh, old coral reef um, carbonate structures, there wasn't as much life. Um, there were maybe some small corals, but the larger coral fans are better um, able to survive here at the top where they can better feed. And do they spawn at a particular time of day, for example, at night, so that they're yeah. less likely for predators to eat the young uh, coral larva? Yeah, yeah they do. Um, the edge the Looks a very nice overhanging edge. A nice sea urchin right there. Uh, no, I'm going to come back around to the uh, northeast. So I assume here. when these, uh, when the... I think we've been up and down all this. The corals spawn like this, it just becomes a random process. And those that fall on good places of eye and those that don't, don't. Yeah, I'm not but sure if there is a, a specific way that they can sense which areas are good and which aren't. Um, which is why I think we saw a lot of that fallen, broken coral material. Um, because if you just happen to be in a bad spot, um, where the flow might be a little bit too strong before you can grow big enough, you could fall over, or they die for other reasons, like not feeding, and they fall over. Um, but I'm not too sure if there's any specific cues or chemosynthetic type of, uh, chemosynthesis cues that they are able to follow to pick a specific area, or if it's the battle of luck. Um, I'm sure Megan, she's a coral expert, she probably would have a better answer for that. It'd be um, interesting to have Megan comment on what time they spawn, because I'd see... My yeah. memory is they do it in the dark. They yeah. also do they do it in, in conjunction with a lunar cycle. They do. There's a new moon they do. at night. And I'm not sure if that's like a species specific uh, event, if they're different for different coral species, but usually it's an annual event um, that happens, um, I believe, during the full moon at nighttime. Um, but let me see. And undoubtedly, it's not only to help make sure they get some of their larvae will root in, uh, you know, uh, have, have an opportunity to root successfully, but also to overwhelm the predators with sheer numbers, which is a very successful tactic of uh, many species in the oceans and on the land. Yeah, according to um, PNAS.org, uh, synchronized mass coral spawning events typically occur several days after a full moon once a year. So that is a, a rare event to catch on, on camera. Um, after a full moon? Yes. Interesting. But it, it does seem like the, it is spawning is uh, speci species specific. So the events occur um, at different times according to different species or different patterns for different coral taxa. But, um, we're having some mechanical oh, issues here. If you hear some noise in the background, folks, it's uh, there's some work going on in this uh, extraordinarily complicated, uh, complex, and state of the art command center here which is constantly evolving and growing and adding new features and equipment to represent the latest technology.
Uh, we have a question. Would corals ever attach themselves to ships? Can you uh, look, uh, <coughs> look down a bit for me? Um, I wouldn't. I'm not sure about that. I know barnacles would, but yeah. they're not. I've never heard of corals. Great work, Dan. Um, we also have um, a point being made in chat that there's also different strategies on how coral can brood, specifically in the deep sea. Um, some of them uh, harbor the eggs themselves and will collect sperm from the water and release the eggs uh, almost like budding, and they will drop very close to the adults. Thank you for chiming in. Getting a lot of questions. Uh, we have an answer from Megan. She says, we don't know a lot about deep sea coral reproduction. It's hard to study since we need more time down at these depths with ROVs and other technology. Uh, what we do know is that a number of species don't spawn with the lunar cycle like shallow water corals and that some species are brooders. Uh, more work needs to be done in this area. Agreed. Oh, somebody made a good point. Depends on how long the ship stays still and the type of corals. So lots of old wrecks have corals. So yeah, I guess if it's a shipwreck, it, it may have corals. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about shipwrecks. I just yeah, thought about like, moving ships. Yeah, moving <laughs> ships. <laughs> yeah, me too. But yeah, definitely coral um, and sponges. Lots of other species can grow on down, ships, uh, depending on what material they're made out of. Mm -hmm. And you can bring your heading around to the, uh, maybe to the east. Dan, we're consulting with uh, Jonathan back here, and how much of the feature do you think you've covered now? Uh, we did the, uh, you can see on our Nav screen here. I don't know if you have a snail trail on uh, high pack, but I did the kind of the northwest, southeast cliff face. So we went up and down, up and down. I don't know, all along that cliff face, and then I flown the top of it, the ridge line. Uh, a few times. Yeah. yeah, at least four or five times. We can, uh, we can continue now to this work along the top. A little yeah. area off to the south that we haven't covered. I don't know if you want to get around the corner here, but this is a uh, new territory here. But uh, we've got a, I don't know, 10, 20, maybe 20 meters uh, northwest, southeast, and all that uppy downy that we did. Right, and that's, so yeah, we're thinking about what to do next. But I think, given that this feature is yeah extensive, let's just keep working working along it, just as yeah. you're doing. Yeah. So you see all my mess mess here. Uh, I could now kind of come around the corner and do draw a bunch of squiggly lines there. Yep. 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 I think Happy that, with that. That's and I, a, that I think that good. how you're doing it with the little squiggly lines is actually a very perfect way. You're, you're getting great coverage on the forward and back, as you know. Yeah, it seems uh, easier to go up and down. Uh, and you get a good, uh, well, Narbit's a good example. of. So we've kind of covered. I'll let Chris show you that while I see what oh, we you can, can see. Here. You can see it developing in the, in the Norbit. Uh, can uh, you move? Yeah. Um, Put Atalanta on top of the oh, wow. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Megan says, yes, we see corals growing on shipwrecks, but it is unlikely for a coral to grow on a moving ship. You can actually maybe, yeah, if you put it right where I am, I'm, uh, I'm 10 meters away from that feature or something like that. 
So that'll put it behind me. Yeah, so, so this feature extends to the uh, southeast, and, and uh, I think yeah, give, given correct. the time so we have, we might as well see. Uh, I, I'm on the southeast side. I don't know. I've done the kind of the cliff face you can see there in orbit, mm -hmm. but I don't, haven't done the other one. So there's, we're like a third of the way through if you want to go all the way around the feature. Yep. Yeah. I, th I, th I think that sounds <laughs> like a plan. Also, the uh, uh, it looks like you only dipped once over the uh, northeastern side. And uh, that, that's on. Uh, I yeah, sorry, I get that backwards. Northeast, yeah. southwest. Yeah. We did the northeast, southwest facing wall. Have not done any of the uh, the northeast face that you see there in northern. Right, that's right. And uh, it looks like that might even be a little steeper, although it's hard to tell because it's in yeah, shadow. Actually, let me like buzz over there before we move the ship. That one might be more better. More better. Seems kind of broken up here. I'm going to take a break and, and shut down the photogrammetry for now uh, right while there. we go do this move, and it'll give a nice uh, time yeah. series. Thank you. You want to hold position there, Chris? Yeah, I'm going to run over to the uh, the northeast side here. Okay, because that, that... See what that looks like. That looks like that might be in. even more interesting. And it's a little yeah, steeper. I agree. I wonder what the relation of the... Uh, and you'll get uh, a, I'll do a high-pass orbit right now. He's going to just be there in a few minutes. So I, said, I wish we had time to do this whole thing. Well, we might. Yeah. So we are still, it looks like, uh, about 385 meters depth. Also depends on the current here. Yeah. If the current's trying to push me into the cliff, this one might be a little challenging. And on uh, feed three, you like can here. see the Norbit map that Manel pulled up for us. Um, yeah, and our depth is 386 meters. Uh, Megan said that corals are generally not picky about what type of hard substrate they grow on, but they do prefer areas where currents are accelerated, like pinnacles, ridges, rises, because these places keep uh, silts from building up around a coral and smothering it, and the current bring lots, brings lots of food to the coral. Thank you, Megan, for spending time with us and, and educating us about coral. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> I'm like good at IDing them, but um, yeah, I forgot that we don't really know much about all deep water coral species and how they reproduce, whether they're broadcasters or they bud or brood. Um, it's still something that you have to, to study, um, which is why we collect specimens of these corals um, to still further study uh, how they reproduce. So yeah, thank you, Megan, for all your help. It's really helpful. Oh. And we have a viewer thanking you for the Norbit map. So thank you, Chris and Manel, for putting it up. I think that's the crack where I kind of left off there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's the crack where we went up and down the last bit to the north. I'm just going to do a general fly along the cliff here to see what we got before we commit. I think um, I'm not seeing quite as much biodiversity here. And I think we got the idea of the bottom of the cliff edge really well on the other, uh, on the cliff you've already done. What's on my mind, and this is for open discussion, um, is I'm thinking that we, let, if we could do a full ring around the edge like this along the areas we haven't surveyed, and then we mow the lawn back and forth just to cover, fully cover the top of this feature first. Roger. And then, because I, yeah, because going up and down is, is eating quite a bit of time, and this is still a very large feature. Oh, look, a cave. I like Ooh. caves. Oh, look, flowers. <laughs> You're as oh, bad look. as I am, Jonathan. Oh, yeah, look, <laughs> Ferdinand. Oh, sees flowers. Must investigate. Okay, uh, are you ready then? I'll fly along.